Thank you very much, Margaret. Uh, let's look. Um, at the weekend, we heard the Minister for Finance and Public Expenditure making comments in relation to the National Broadband Plan. When asked about possible knock-on effects of the spend on the National Broadband Plan, he rejected any notion that government plans for tax breaks would be impacted. He effectively said no matter what the cost of the National Broadband Plan, money would still be found to cut taxes. In other words, don't worry, the money will be found. Quite extraordinary statements. And I am calling for uh, the Minister for Finance to be brought in to discuss this obsession with tax cutting above all else. We know that there have been terse answers given to the likes of patients waiting for life-saving drugs, school children waiting on proper school buildings, older citizens who've had their home care hours slashed in recent years, or people desperately waiting on housing lists. And yet the priority, as stated again at the weekend by your Minister for Finance leader, is tax cuts. This obsession, this ideological obsession with tax cuts at the expense of all else is frankly completely at odds with the reality for so many people today in terms of the health and housing crisis. Indeed, it's also a striking contrast in terms of the experience of the 17,000 SIP2 members in the health service who will complete a ballot for strike action this week. These are porters, chefs, support staff who have honored the Lansdowne Road Agreement who have gone through a job evaluation process, who have been awarded money through that process, and who have now been snubbed by the Minister for Finance. So the Minister for Finance sits in breach of his own Lansdowne Road agreement. He can't find money for those workers, but he'll find money for tax cuts. Last night, I met childcare workers in Clare, part of SIP2's Big Start campaign, people on abysmally low wages who've campaigned for years. The Minister can find no money for them either. What does this tell us about the priorities of Fine Gael in government? What does it tell us? Tax cuts, tax cuts, tax cuts. Health in crisis, housing in the worst crisis in the history of the state. But your minister leader can only make one guarantee that regardless of what else happens in this state, he'll deliver tax cuts for his wealthy friends. It's high time for a debate on this issue. I was very struck, by the way, by the comments of a Fine Gael spokesperson on TV last night in relation to the rent crisis. He said that if it's given time, the rent crisis will work itself out. People who are renting simply don't have time. Every month an expensive rental accommodation sees them further away from ever having a home of their own. This evening in the Dáil, there will be a debate to enshrine a right to a home into the Constitution. Sinn Féin are proud to make that stance today. I don't have to wonder where Fine Gael will be there. They'll be opposing it. Perhaps we need a real debate in terms of the ideological chasm that's there in this chamber at the minute. Fine Gael and their obsession with tax cuts are costing far too much in terms of the people of this country. Thank you, Senator.